Hi, um, my name is Johnny Thomas, and uh, my question actually goes back to something that you said before that kind of reminded me of something that's bothered me for a long time. And that is, why does, why are black people sort of labeled as welfare queens? Or why are we as a people sort of seen as the ones that take up you know, free stuff from the government, and that we have to be supported in some way. Like, that was never my life growing up. That was never my experience. And I never knew anyone who, who was lazy, right? Um, just something from this week. Jeb Bush said that uh, he wants to bring black people over to the Republican Party by um, making us aspire for something greater. Then, um, then, uh, you know, just, you know, yeah. getting free stuff. And I don't want to get free stuff, you know? I mean, I think that we want expensive stuff. Like, <laughs> like, 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 so I guess my point is here, um, where does all that come from? Okay, I think I have, I have, I think I have an answer. <laughs> Or at least the contribution to uh, the discussion that you have initiated. Uh, and it also will help us, I think, recognize the extent to which we're haunted by the ghost of history. Uh, the fact is that, that black people are disproportionately poor. Why is that? The fact is that black people are disproportionately jobless and disproportionately uh, have housing needs and disproportionately have health care needs and disproportionately are sent to prison. Uh, in this world of neoliberal discourse, the assumption is always to start with the individual. And even in, in searching solutions, I think that's a problem because, then, and, and I'm saying this in a friendly way, that you said that you would never um, been in a situation where you asked for free stuff or you didn't grow up with people like that. Uh, 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 but then, of course, there's, a, there's supposed to be those, you know, now we have those black people who have. Uh, who qualify for full citizenship and full membership. Mm -hmm. You know, because we even have a black president. Uh, anybody yes. notice that? Uh, <laughs> but at the same time, this does not prevent racist, ideological, and material assaults on black communities writ large, poor black communities uh, writ large. Now, where does this come from? I would argue with W.E.B. Du Bois that the failure to abolish slavery in a productive way has haunted us to this very day. And this is the meaning of Tommy C. Coates' case for reparations. And not reparations in terms of just giving a check to everyone, but creating the institutions that really should have been created in the immediate aftermath of slavery so that former slaves could have been incorporated into a new kind of democracy and not simply assimilated into the old democracy. And that is what happened. So we're living with the consequences of the failure to create what W.E.B. Du Bois called an abolition democracy in the aftermath of the Civil War. We're still living <coughs> with the consequences of that. And people uh, today may not um, recognize the extent to which they are the bearers of history and the extent to which they are evidence of the fact that uh, the past is never only the past. Um, 
had, had this abolition de democracy been created, then there would, have been, there would not have been a need for a civil rights movement. Because black people would have been full citizens. But the very fact that we had to demand full citizenship was an indication of the fact that the vestiges of slavery were still with us. And the very fact that that so-called full citizenship um, did not, ex did, did, did not um, account for economic despair, because one can be a full citizen and still have no money, and still have no job. So that means we have to perhaps ask about the nature of the democracy under which we live. And ask questions like, well, maybe we need economic democracy as well as political democracy. subjugated people and people who historically uh, have, 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 have suffered uh, uh, under the evils of capitalism. I don't know, does that make any sense? Uh, <laughs> does it make any sense? <laughs> you know, because I, you know, I think, I, I, I don't like to say, you know, I've never been lazy. Because sometimes laziness is not bad. <laughs> especially, you know, especially if it's a protest against uh, a, a kind of uh, 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 you know capitalist drive to reap more and more profits from from everyone. So, as a matter of fact, the nephew of Karl Marx wrote a book uh, called La Femme, and it was called The Right to Be Lazy. <laughs> the Right to Be Lazy. So lazy is not always bad. But at the same time, the assumption is that human beings, black human beings, brown human beings, other people of color who are poor are poor because they have failed as individuals to you know, live up to the standards that the society has created. And all you have to do is go into prisons, and you see, you see huge numbers of really uh, brilliant people, intelligent people. Uh, as a matter of fact, we would not be talking about the prison industrial complex and the crisis of over-incarceration as we do today had not a lot of this been pioneered by people who were in prison uh, reflecting on the implications of their own uh, condition. So, yeah, it's about who has access, it's about opportunity, it's about who is really allowed to participate. Uh, uh, you know, as, uh, and I, and I, I want to say, uh, if I say full citizens, I'm not talking about people with papers. Because I think we need a very different notion of citizenship that doesn't rely on documents, because some of the some of the the, the, the best um, democratically um, uh, focused citizens we have in this country today are undocumented immigrants. Yeah. So let's try to think a little bit more capaciously. 